Awesome. Thank you, Layla, so much. I'm really excited to be here with everyone. I'm James Montemagno, as Layla said, uh, and I'm one of the live coders. Uh, I've been working side by side uh, C Sharp Fritz for many a years, uh, and it's been amazing to see so many lovely people in the community uh, and just brand new coders coming up, live streaming, showing off everything that they want to do. Uh, I work over on uh, the .NET team at Microsoft, like I said, side by side C Sharp Fritz. You may not know it. I think that he tries to ignore me all the time, but he can't. He can't resist me. Um, and I've been building something really cool on my stream for the last uh, few months, uh, which is actually an application for Animal Crossing. And I specifically wanted to talk about the backend system, the server part, the actual part that I'm not good at because I'm a mobile developer and I don't build websites, I don't build backend systems, I integrate with them. Uh, and as more of a mobile developer, and that's usually what I do on my stream on Fridays, uh, I had a conundrum, which was how do I build a backend uh, for my entire mobile app? application to share turnip prices in Animal Crossing, but don't have any servers, don't have any usernames, don't have anybody log into the system, and I wanted to keep my costs low. Uh, so let's hop over to the deck uh, over here. Like I said, I'm James Montemagno. You can find me on Twitch every single Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific at James Montemagno. That's my Twitter. That's my GitHub. That's my Twitch. That's just me. There's only one of me that I know of, so you could just Google me. Um, now, uh, like Layla said uh, in my intro, I'm also a mono advocate. Uh, so before my sessions, I like to talk about some of my favorite monkeys in the world. And this month is the Red Shank Duke Langer. It is one of my favorite monkeys. In fact, we raised funds on my channel, over $1,000 for the Duke Langer Foundation. It's a beautiful monkey that's found in uh, Laos and Vietnam and very, very small parts of it. There's only about 1,300 of these beautiful creatures left in the world, which is very sad, but they are absolutely stunning and adorable. And they live right here on Santra Mountain, uh, which is right outside of Da Nang. If anyone's ever interested in going there and doing an eco tour, let me know, um, which is uh, really amazing to see um, them in their natural habitat. Uh, they live in this tiny little mountain, so only two places on earth that they live. Um, and you can see them if you get up really, really early at 4 a.m. as they feed on leaves, which is cool. And to really scope this out, if you've never been to Vietnam, that you can't even see it on a map when you just look at Cambodia and Thailand and Vietnam together. It's just a tiny itty bitty bitty part right there. Um, and their actual home is um, being encroached on by um, large resorts and things like that, um, which is very sad. And yes, I do have a Duke Langer uh, emote, as Martin has pointed out in the chat, which is great. Um, I got to go to Vietnam. I was very uh, lucky uh, to go. And these are some of the photos I took of them uh, on the eco tour. That's through a telescope. What did you know if you put a telescope in your iPhone right up to it? It takes beautiful photos. Uh, like I said, we raised over $1,000 for the Duke Langer Foundation. So you got an amazing organization over there in Vietnam, helping save all these beautiful, lovely creatures every uh, single day out on the ground. So if you're interested in learning more, come to my chat um, on my stream. We can always talk about Duke Langer's or any other monkey uh, or go to dukelanger.org. They have a fantastic 20 minute video uh, documentary to learn more about them. Highly recommend that. All right, let's get into it. Uh, I built a little application called Island Tracker in Fluff Knows. Uh, he's a user of my application and a beta tester. And so is C Sharp Fritz, surprisingly enough. Uh, and I had this conundrum, which was, I was texting my friends every single day for the turnip prices on their island because I wanted to make a profit. And I said, well, I'm a developer. Why am I texting everybody? I'll build an app for it. Uh, so I built an app called Island Tracker. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the App Store on Google and Apple. And um, I just wanted it to make it easy. And I wanted to have a friend system. I wanted to, to be able to share turnip prices easily across the web. And I'd never really done this, even though I've been a mobile developer for like a decade now, but I've always had to build the backend. The UI was easy, but the actual backend I didn't know anything of. So I had these goals setting up for the app. I wanted it to be a beautiful looking iOS and Android apps because I have friends on both um, operating systems. I'm an Android user. My wife is an iOS user. We check each other's turnip prices, even though we live inside the same house. It just makes it easy because we're entering, getting predictions, and why not just sync that to the cloud? I wanted to track those weekly pr uh, prices and predictions, sync data, and create a profile with a backend. And I wanted it to be super simple. I wanted no logins. That was my goal. Just why I have to log into Twitter or Facebook or anything? Just what if I just downloaded the app and it worked? Um, and of course, I wanted to view, sync my friend statuses, prices, dodo codes, things like that that were going on. And of course, in the future, I wanted it to maybe do push notifications or even have desktop support. 
Uh, so that's why I built a native application with Xamarin in C Sharp, because uh, I'm a C Sharp Xamarin developer, and I wanted to be able to you know, get those native integrations in native perf. And this is what I built. Uh, it's a beautiful application, I think, uh, thanks to amazing community of other live coders that build awesome applications uh, out there uh, and, and, and uh, libraries for me to use. Uh, and a bunch of great compo component vendors too, like Syncfusion that I use and the free community edition to build some really cool stuff. So there's a home, there's a tracking, there's a friend system, and this was the, the meat of it. You know, there's tons of applications and websites to get turnip predictions, but how do you share those with your friends? Here you can even say I have the Dodo code on here so I could visit my friend's island if I wanted. So how do I actually create that backend system? And that was really the tricky part of it. Um, I was already in C-sharp and .NET, and I kind of wanted to stay there, and it'd be cool to share code everywhere. So I ended up having um, these goals for the back end. Again, no servers, no databases, which is kind of a conundrum, uh, and also affordable. I don't have tons of money sitting around, um, and I didn't want to spend millions of dollars on an uh, Animal Crossing application that I was going to give away at someday for free. Right? I think it's 99 cents right now, and eventually there's going to be a free version, and then we'll have like in-app purchase and stuff. Um, Lazmet says, I've not seen a non-beautiful apple. Thank you. I don't know, but yes, um, I appreciate that. So this is the system that I built. Um, it's Azure Functions, which is serverless compute. This is similar to other um, backends like Auth0 has some and also AWS Lambda. These are um, functions that sit in the cloud. They execute stuff on demand. Uh, the cool part about this is this middle tier is the only thing that the mobile application talks to. So it, the mobile app talks and receives data from the Azure function. And then on the right-hand side, we have something in Azure called table storage. It's kind of like a database, but I mean, it kind it's, it's, it's kind of like NoSQL, but it's kind of like SQL, and it, but it's kind of not. It's, it's, it's weird and it's awesome and it's really cheap, <laughs> um, which is great. And, and inside of table storage, which is Azure storage, is also blob storage. So if I ever wanted to upload videos or images, that's included in the pricing. And then also queue so I can have a queuing system. So there's a lot packed in there. But I settled on table storage after uh, my wife recommended it to me because she had done a spike at her company about it. Um, so mobile app talks to the Azure function, and then the Azure function does all the heavy lifting. It does the authentication, it does um, the, the inserts, updates, and deletes into the uh, table storage, and then sends that, that data through the Azure function back. And there's a real big benefit here because if I need to make changes on the server, um, the server, which is the Azure functions, um, which actually have cost me less than five cents for two months, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I just update some code there. I don't have to redeploy a website. I don't have to redeploy the mobile app. I just put it right there. And the same thing with the table storage. It's super duper simple. I think the first month cost me like a dollar. Um, and that's even included in the free Azure credits that I have. Um, so there's a lot of like benefit there and it's kind of these nice, nice layers of abstraction. So here is the concept that I have is I have a user. This is anybody using the app. Instafluff loads up the app, right? And he's like, all right, I got this app. Well, what's in this user account? Well, the user has a private and public key. And this is really the key to the no login authentication magic. The private key specifically is for server communication. And by server communication, it's funny that my title says no servers, but I'll say function communication, or it could be your server if you have a server, um, is, is, the, is the code. It's the bearer token. It's a common practice where you have a bearer token um, that does the authentication handshake. Um, and then the public key is what I'd share with my friends. So Instafluff could share uh, his uh, friend code with me, which is the public key. Um, and then it's also the combination of the private and public key equals Instafluff. So these codes or these private keys are GUIDs. So they're just a series of letters and numbers, and they're generated when the app is created. And this is really, really cool uh, because the user doesn't have to do anything. They don't have to enter a username. They don't create a password. When they install the application, it's tied to their, their, their device. And if they use some services like iCloud or if they do backups and, and move to another system, um, it'll go with them or they could always export the keys as well. Almost kind of like two-factor authentication in a way. 
Now I take these GUIDs and I store them inside of Keychain on iOS and Android. And I use a library provided by Xamarin called Xamarin Essentials. Uh, so it's a one or two lines of code to, to get that data, which is cool. So private key, public key. Private key is, um, the, it is the thing there. Now, uh, some people have asked in the chat here, what about recoverability? What if they don't have backups they install? That's a great question. Uh, the nice thing is that I can see the data and I have the data so I can um, I'll enable, I have an import export system and I can generate codes for any user with a single tap um, from the server, which is nice. Um, but what I found so far is that uh, one person um, so far has had any, has had any issues and it's just because they just didn't export it or whatever. So, it's, or didn't see the import export option and, and that's good feedback, right? I think that not having a login system and only relying on this causes some of those like, well, what if, right? Um, but I also didn't want to put in a whole web browser and do a whole bunch of, uh, craziness to get that going. Um, and like I said, it's tied to the device, so it can be, uh, transferred via import export. Uh, one thing that I had thought about doing is as soon as creating your account, maybe just export it to an email automatically. So something like that. Um, but like I said, if you're transferring devices to device, you know, you'll be good to go. Um, cool. So let's get into it. Let me show you a little demo here, uh, of the back end uh, before we get into the actual friend system part and how that works. So this is the mobile application. Uh, and here's like where I normally put in my turnip prices. And this is the iOS uh, simulator and the Android emulator. This is running on my Mac right now, uh, my MacBook Pro. And I haven't created my account yet. Uh, and what I wanna do is show you how I set this up. The first thing is over on um, my terminal, I'm gonna start a service called Azure Write. Uh, Azure Write is going to emulate um, Azure table storage locally on my Mac, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this works really, really nice. Um, it's just started. It's just sitting there, which is cool. Uh, and then I'm going to also start up Azure functions. So here, I'm just going to say funk start build, and this is going to build and start the Azure functions locally on my dev machine. And I'll kind of show you what this looks like. There's some ASCII art. It's doing a bunch of stuff and I have all these functions. So you can see local host. 10, uh, 7071, API get friend request, uh, get friends, uh, different APIs. So it kind of exposes a RESTful service there, which is nice. And if I pull up um, Visual Studio for Mac, we can kind of look at my entire code project here. So over here, I have my Android app, my iOS app. I also have my Azure function, and I also have some shared data here. Um, so I have like friend, friend, uh, user, things like that. And in my back end, uh, I have different models of entities that I'll enter into the database. And I have three entities, friend, friend request, and user. And our user is name, island name, some status, uh, gate code, dodo code, kind of information about me. And that's the information I'll send to my, my users. Uh, and then my Azure function here. Um, actually, uh, looks a little bit like this. It goes in, it says, create profile. It'll be a HTTP post. I go and I get the, the private key. I deserialize it. I sort of get in a chunk of JSON of the user. I verify that this user, um, data is correct. Like they've specified a public name, name and Island name. Uh, and then down here, I even encrypt their switch friend code on the fly. So I encrypt that in the database. I create the user entity that I'm going to shove into table storage. And then, um, I have this like insert, you have insert merge operations, delete operations that you're executing. So let's actually look at the data and I'll show you another tool, which is Azure, uh, storage Explorer. This is on both Mac windows and Linux. And over here we can see, I have no users, no friend requests and no friends and that's sad. <laughs> so over here I have my tables and it's kind of everything you can do and you just do it all locally, which I think is cool. And you can also look at your data in the cloud. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create, um, a new user. We're going to call it, uh, Mott's iOS, and this will be Fafa, which is another beautiful Island. We're going to create this. This is talking to the Azure function 
which is right here. So you see it executed the Azure function. It said a create profile was called status 200. It took 600 milliseconds, which is cool. Uh, over here, we're going to also create uh, this user. So let's go ahead and tap there. We'll say Mots. We'll call this one InstaFluff. InstaFluff, that's better. And they'll call this uh, Fluff Island. I like to use InstaFluff as my example of, uh, of, of <laughs> and everything. It's such a fun name. So we'll say create. Again, just instantaneously, it talked to the back end. And if I go over to my user table here and hit refresh, we now have two user tables right here. So we have the partition key, which is the public key, and then a private key. So this public key, private key is how we make that distinction. And there's a bunch of information in here, like friend code, gate code, the island name. Uh, here's the uh, emoji. And if I go over to, to InstaFluff, uh, for example, here, and we um, close this, and we go into the emojis, and we say, you know, heart, heart emoji. And um, you can change any of the data, hit sync. And now if I refresh this data, we'll see right away we get that InstaFluff uh, has two uh, different uh, emojis going on here, which is really cool. And then I have a bunch of other data in here. So turn up prices, turn up day, all this information. So now the user can just start to use the application. So here we come over and, you know, let's say I have my oh, open my gate for the next few hours. I come into tracking and on Sunday, let's say we bought turnips for 100 and today's Saturday. So my predictions are, you know, I didn't enter any data, but let's just say that I, you know, it's 109 and this afternoon it's uh, maybe like 140. And uh, that was probably our predictions. And we can go ahead and uh, sync this data. So let's sync it up. Same thing here for InstaFluff. Let's say InstaFluff is, you know, over here bought it at 90 because he just had a great day. And then uh, today he just, you know, sold it. He, he lied in here. He just said, I sold it for 600, just made mass profit on the turnip game. And now we're good. Like that's our backend. And in fact, if we go back over here, we refresh the data, we'll see all that new data coming in right here. Fruit, AM price, PM price, gate status, things like that, which is cool. Uh, and uh, in fact, I think here, I'll just, I'll just turn this off. So we see some predictions coming in for our user once we set that up. So we kind of have our, our data going in here. But that's just the start of it because we have our back end running. We have, you know, we have our table storage running, doing all the different deletes and inserts. So we're doing it all locally, which is cool. And now we're ready to become friends. Uh, and that's the biggest part here that we want to do. So the friend system became really tricky because sort of shoving data up there was easy. Uh, but how do you synchronize and create a friend system? So it works a little bit like this. Uh, so InstaFluff here says, man, I really want James to be my friend. Um, so what uh, InstaFluff is going to do is he's going to share his friend code link with me. This is actually very similar how the Nintendo Switch works. So in the app, he says, give me my friend link, and I'm going to send that to me, James. James uh, InstaFluff sends it to me. I get it in my mobile application. I was like, whoa, awesome, super cool. And uh, I get a little dialogue that says, do you want to send a friend request to InstaFluff? So this is an opt-in system, unlike Twitter. Twitter is you can follow anybody. This is more of a Facebook system where I say, I would like to be your friend, right? Here's my, here's my profile page. Go ahead and tap the be my friend button. So I, I want to be um, Insta, InstaFluff's friend. And InstaFluff then gets a notification in his app and he says, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, Maltz wants to be my friend. This is the greatest day on earth. And then he says, Deny. No, I'm just kidding. He says approve. And that's great. And now we're best friends in the entire world. We're like, well, best friends. And everything is great. Um, so let's, and the cool part here is how the actual deep linking works. Because how do you create a code that works really seamless? Um, well, I use this thing in Xamarin Forms called Xamarin Form Shell. And it enables me to use sort of like URL navigation. So if I had a list page and I want to go to details, I can say go to details. If I want to go back, I can say dot, dot. So I can kind of have these URI navigations. And I can also do things like pass data queries. So here, like a city ID. And I could pass that across and see that I can pass some information in that URL. So it's part of the Xamarin um, uh, framework, which is really cool. So this is what a friend code looks like based on this URI scheme. It looks like a bunch of gobbledygook because it doesn't actually matter what it is to the end user. To the end user, I'm just going to tap a link, my app's going to open, and boom. So let me break it down. The first part here, AC Island Tracker, 
is my unique URL, URL scheme. So it's a scheme that you specify and tell iOS and Android, my application can handle this type of deep link into my app. A lot of deep links are HTTPS, because if you have a website, you could do that. Then we have slash friends slash invite. And what this is gonna do is tell Xamarin Forms to go to this page. Go to the friends page and then go to the invite page. And then it's going to pass some additional data. So it's gonna pass that public key. So here's this big public key. And then over here, I'm gonna add just a little bit of data um, for name because I don't want to uh, do a server request just to verify that, that to get the user's name, that'd be kind of silly. So I pass it along, I kind of cheat the system there. And you can pass a bunch of other stuff. So what's cool is that whenever someone taps on this link or opens this link in the application, um, this is what I do, it's very minimal code. I go and I first check here, I say, um, the link is re received. I make sure that you didn't tap your own link because that's totally possible, like you just accidentally tap it. So I just make sure that you didn't do it, uh, that'd be funny. Uh, and then here, this is the only thing I use. I say go to, and the host is that slash friends slash invite, and then path and query is that ID and the name, and then it just goes, and that, that's, that's it which is cool. And this is what it looks like in the deep link. Um, so I tap on that link. It says, do you wanna add James as a friend? Boom. Uh, now every application kind of handles this differently. So most SMS messages and email things handle it, but sometimes it, they don't. So I also have a way to copy and paste it into the application. So let's see what this looks like over here in code and, and go in demo form. So over here in Sefluff, um, I was like, hey James, um, I, want, I would love for you to be my friend. So he's gonna tap on this little share link and copy it to the clipboard. And uh, oh, now when I go into my application, there's a few things I could do. He could have messaged it to me. He could have sent it to me in an email. Um, um, or I could have just opened my application. And when I go to the friends tab, it'll check my clipboard. So I saved it into my clipboard on my, my Mac or wherever I'm at. And then it says here, do you want to add InstaFluff as a friend? And I'll say, of course, I want to add InstaFluff as a friend. That sounds amazing. Um, and if I go back into my Azure Storage Explorer, we'll see that I have a new friend request. So I'm saying that I want to be InstaFluff's friend. So now when InstaFluff refreshes, we can see right here, InstaFluff has a friend request. Whoa, cool. Um, we'll tap on that. Oh, boom. Mott's iOS on Fafa would like to be your friend and approve or deny. So let's just approve and we'll just double check. Of course, we want that to be our friend and we're friends now. And now when I come back over and I refresh, look at that, best friends. And now I can see that, um, you know, InstaFluff can see that I have, um, I can see that one, InstaFluff has killer prices. I probably want to go over, hope that he opens his gates for me. Then he can also see my price, um, AM, PM, and predictions, or anything that I have inside of here. Um, I can I can toggle these if I had multiple friends, and it would show me the gate status, open or close, back and forth, and we can go there. And it's super duper simple. And if we go back into our Azure Storage Explorer, we'll see we no longer have friend requests, but we do have friends or each other friends. So here, I'm InstaFluff's friend. InstaFluff is my friend, and that's it. It's a very simple back and forth method. And the reason I put two table entries in here is just for speed um, at the end of the day. And the same thing's true. If InstaFluff's like, you know what, had a huge falling out, just like not my friend anymore, then uh, all InstaFluff needs to do is come in and swipe away, hit remove. Now, if I go back over into my database, we're no longer friends. Oh. But actually, don't worry, InstaFluff and I are friends in the real life, so we're good to go. And that's how it works. That is how a no username, no database, serverless um, system works for Island Tracker. It's super duper cool. Uh, I really enjoy it. The entire application is open source. If you are using um, Island Tracker or want to use Island Tracker, you go to islandtracker.app. That's the cool website I set up there. Um, you can find the, all the code on my GitHub at um, github.com slash jamesmontamagno. Uh, which is awesome because a lot of people have asked me, how did I build it? Well, I built it all live on Twitch, actually. So you can go back into my archive on my YouTube or my Twitch archive and take a look there. Uh, browse the code, uh, give it a go. If you have feedback, we have uh, open source uh, GitHub for 
for features you want to see added. And it was really cool because one of my um, viewers um, on my Twitch page actually contributed code to do the predictions. He ported the, the code from JavaScript into C Sharp, which is cool. If you want to hear more from me, I also have a weekly developer podcast called Merge Conflicts. So I hope you check that out if you like to listen to this voice more often, just not on video, maybe just more audio. You're like, I don't like looking at that guy, but maybe you just want to hear this voice and you'd be good to go. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for everyone for sharing links as well. I think that is going to do it for me. And look at that. I hit it right on the dot there with 25 minutes. And thanks everyone to have an amazing live coders conference. I hope that you check me out on Twitch. I'm just going to kind of.